Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am coming to you from my front yard. Can you see a kitty in the window back there? <laughs> my name is Carolyn and this is our Simple Abundance year with Sarah Bond Bronick's book, Simple Abundance. We're in the section of the book where we're talking about a lot of garden related topics. And first of all too, if you came on and watched my live fairy tea party the other night, thank you so much. It was so much fun. I thought that the comments were gone because after we were done, I tried to go on and just see if I had missed any and they weren't there. But then everything showed up the next day, so I was able to relive it. And in fact, when you watch it back now, you can see the comments in real time, which is pretty fun. So thanks again for that. That was so much fun. So back to the book, I am going to combine a couple of her entries about blossoming. So more metaphors for the garden. Let me get to the right page. I didn't put a bookmark in. The first one I want to talk about is called Choosing to Blossom. And she talks to us in this entry about how blossoming, if we think about that in terms of our life, that would be us growing and becoming more of who we are authentically, right? And changing. When you think about something blossoming, it's definitely evolving, probably becoming more beautiful, right? And more fragrant, more personality. She does have a good point about how it can, it can be a challenge. So she says, how much time, passion, and energy, and emotion do we expend resisting change because we assume growth must also be painful? Much personal growth is uncomfortable, especially learning to set boundaries in relationships. When we commit to nurturing our authentic selves, people choose or close to us are going to start noticing that changes are taking place. This is the season when growth, <laughs> did you hear Annabelle? This is the season when growth in the garden, which had been gradual, now accelerates. It's the season for us as well, now that we're six months into the journey towards wholeness. So yeah, I told you guys that I've been changing a lot. Have you been changing a lot? wonder if the people around you are noticing. She goes on to say, sometimes you might have been that person, ooh, you might have been that person that always said yes for everything and now you're setting up some boundaries and so that might be a shock to people in your life i love that you can hear the birds and everything it was too nice of a day to be inside even though there are neighbors about so we'll see what happens hopefully i don't get any interference She asks if we can find a perfect rosebud either from the garden or at a flower shop and place it on our desk or night table. Because the Talmud, that's a Jewish text, tells us that, quote, each blade of grass has an angel that bends over it and whispers, grow, grow. So do we, she says. Wow, that's pretty cool to think about the divine forces helping us along this way, encouraging us to grow. We're always asking for more through living, right? What do you think about blossoming? Do you feel like you're blossoming? And this is a choice. She says choosing to blossom. So it's not just a passive thing. also in terms of blooming she discusses how she's what she calls a late bloomer she did everything later in her life even not having her first garden until she was 45 she said uh, but that is kind of in line with all of her other things because she got married later and had her child later she's quoting may sarton by saying gardening is one of the rewards of middle age, when one is ready for an impersonal passion, a passion that demands patient, accurate awareness of the world, 
outside oneself and the power to keep on growing through all the times of drought, through the cold snows, towards those moments of pure joy when all failures are forgotten and the plum tree flowers. <laughs> you know, when I think about the garden, I don't know if I said this to you guys already, and there's ants crawling on me, sorry, if that's what you see me reacting to. Um, I tend to pick, I tend to pick things that are easy, that I don't have to worry about, and I don't plant anything really that weathers the winter. Although some of the herbs actually that I got this year, they can be all weather herbs. Um, but I don't tend to feel like I'm toiling over the garden. I, I know that say geraniums, they will live no matter how you treat them. So I tend to pick things like that so that it's not a toil and it's not difficult and I don't have to think about the snows and whether I, well I do pay attention to whether things are supposed to be sun or shade. Let's see what else she says. Don't forget to tend to your interior secret garden because the seeds that will blossom in outward expressions are always first scattered within. Weed out disappointments, frustrations, and diminished ambitions, unfulfilled expectations, and anger about what has gone before or what has yet not yet come. These emotional weeds only choke your creativity. Let an unfettered imagination sow the seeds of possibility in the rich soil of your soul. That's pretty cool. <laughs> then let passion tend the garden with patience and perseverance. And I skipped a part, I remember reading, um, when I skimmed this earlier, she says something about the underbrush. She says, the invisible underbrush holding us back is our own thoughts. When we choose not to focus on what is missing from our lives, but on the abundance that's present, for instance, love, health, family, friends, work, and personal pursuits that bring us pleasure, the wasteland falls away and we experience joy in the real lives we live today. So. On this channel, we're talking about Sarah's principles, joy, harmony, beauty, order, simplicity, and gratitude. And gratitude is the basis of everything, remember. So I really hope that you are continuing on with your gratitude practice. It is so important. Sorry, it's the ants. Um, it is so important to be taking stock in those things that may seem so small. But that's what simple abundance is all about. And the more you focus on what you have, like a kitty, <laughs> uh, the more that you will attract to yourself. But if you focus on the lack, then that's what you're going to be noticing. And you'll probably attract more of that. So be grateful for what you have. I like all those things she said. So the underbrush was the negative thoughts. And then she said the, we're supposed to weed out all those things and sow the seeds of possibility in the rich soil of your soul. That is really cool. And the last one, we're talking about blooming and we're, we're making it correlate with, with uh, growing in our, in our lives as well. There is something that you need to do with plants, especially house plants. You need to repot them every so often, right? Not only because their roots get too large, but because their soil needs to be replenished because they've already used up all the nutrients. So in terms of that correlating with our lives, there's definitely a correlation, right? Sometimes you grow and you outgrow relationships, jobs, Sorry, I'm out here where the, the road is too. Uh, and so you, you need a new pot. I'm gonna read a couple things because she makes some good points about repotting. And I will just say, because now that I just said the thing about outgrowing stuff, she does say one thing. Repotting doesn't mean that you have to leave a marriage or quit a job. It just means you need something new. And she goes on to say like, you could go back to school, you could start your own business, you could get your sewing machine fixed, trying new recipes, all these things. And 
even writing a book, she says. <laughs> she says, page one will stay blank until you put something on it. I may write a book someday. I've already been thinking about it. Uh, she says, when she's talking about actually repotting plants, she says she sets the plant in a slightly larger pot. Not too large, because we must not overwhelm, but encourage. So too, I must not take it out into the world too quickly. I will add rich potting soil, water, and then slowly take the plant to a shady spot for a day so that it can adjust to its new environment. So that would definitely be like being gentle with yourself and knowing that change, it, it can really come on quickly, but everybody around you and yourself probably needs time to, to adjust. We need to consider repotting for growth, but when? When we wilt even before the day begins. So that would be like you would know it would be time to quote repot yourself. When we can't seem to visualize or dream, when we can't remember the last time we laughed, when we have absolutely nothing in the next 24 hours to look forward to. When this happens week in and week out, we need to realize that we're pot bound. We need to gently loosen the soil around our souls, find something that sparks our imagination, quickens our pulse, brings a smile, or a giddy lilt to our conversations. Hmm. I can relate to that a lot. And I feel like I was absolutely there earlier in the year. I didn't really think about it that way. Well, I knew that I knew that doing things that filled my soul helped me, but I didn't really think about a repotting process. I was definitely trying to be gentle with myself. Hmm. I'm going to really be thinking about this one. What do you guys think about blooming, blossoming, repotting, potentially being a late bloomer? I didn't read the quote at the end of that late bloomer one, but Jane Fonda had said, um, it's okay to be a late bloomer as long as you don't miss the flower show. <laughs> it's funny too because I'm sitting in front of the front flower bed. I haven't shown you guys the front garden. It's not as elaborate as the back. But today the grounds people just totally ripped up a bush behind me. So if I had tried to film this earlier, you would not have seen the window where Annabelle is. I don't know. She's still back there. Um, but I was telling a friend, now I have all this new area where I want to plant some more flowers. <laughs> I get kind of obsessed. So I'll have more of a front garden. I was kind of not really doing much in the front this year. Are you guys growing a garden? And are you tending to the garden of your soul, your secret garden? Let me know. I love reading your comments, so please leave one. Thank you to the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. And thanks again for for all your love and fun on the fairy tea party night. And I will see you soon. We're almost at the end of June now. We're going to be talking about a new month soon. It seems like it's going by quickly. We're halfway through the year. We've come a long way. We're blooming. Hopefully you feel like you're blooming. I know it's been a positive thing for a lot of you from all the comments. So I am definitely blooming. I could be like a little flower in my garden right now, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.